Uh, today we uh, held Aftershock and it was a NorCal versus SoCal uh, 5v5 in the King of Fighters uh, 13 and a 8 versus 8 in Ultimate Marvel versus Capcom 3. Um, this is a, an exhibition event that uh, Ultra Chen TV and I Play Winner have been joining together to put this on and you know what we're really trying to do is trying to I don't want to say bring back because a lot of people have been doing a lot to, to keep the rivalry stuff going, but I've always considered rivalries to be like one of the most important parts of the fighting game community. And uh, so this event here, Aftershock, we're trying to bring that back, especially the NorCal SoCal rivalry, which is basically just been at the forefront of all rivalries in the fighting game community. Today I'm here at uh, UC Santa Barbara, showing our SoCal talent, you know, putting our skills on display, thrashing these NorCal scumbags. That's what we're doing. <laughs> it's been really common back in the day with the Marvel two days in the East Coast versus the West Coast. It was very strong rivalry, you know? That's the grassroots of the fighting game community or like those rivalries like Justin Wong and Sanford rivalry, you know, that was the classic Duck Doe and Justin Wong, you know, that was like been going on for, 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 for years. You know, and then you got like, you know, the, the West Coast, like John Choi versus Alex Valle, you know? Those are the classic ones, one of the best ones. I mean, I, I hate focusing on that because there's a lot of rivalries going around in other areas and such, but NorCal SoCal has been there since the beginning. I mean, if there was a first rivalry, like true rivalry in the fighting game community, it was NorCal SoCal. When it comes to NorCal, I just see the enemy. You know, I mean, yeah, we're all one unified state, but in actuality, I see us in SoCal, myself, as a superior breed. Every area wants to think that they're better than the others. You know what I'm saying? Like even in SoCal, you know, there's division among cities, but we do unify when it comes to attacking our northern, our northern enemies. We've, the two sides of California have always just been like, we cannot lose to this other side, we cannot lose to this other side, and it just levels up the game so much. I believe rivalries are great. In all honesty, I think that it breeds competition. It also makes people get better. You know, there's a lot of pride, a lot, on, a lot at stake here. Nobody wants to look like the lesser team or the lesser region, the weaker squad. So they definitely put in a lot of work. You know, it makes the people local to you play harder, makes your scene better, and it makes the enemies play harder too. If you, if you have a rival, you don't want to lose to that guy. You will do everything in your power not to lose to that guy. Because if you lose, it's not only you that's gonna be like taking all the blame or, or like he gets all the bragging rights but also everyone in his turf will be talking a lot of smack until the rematch you know so you don't want to hold that L in your chest ever you know we have to have motivation to grind you know um, I think it was the rivalries that kept us so dominant in Marvel 2 even when you have players you know that have this goal in their mind like I'm going to smash this region I'm gonna smash this player from this region then it makes them hungrier and then not only does it make them make them hungry it makes them want to make the players in their region hungry because they need those players to help themselves level up and they want those players to dominate the other players it's definitely good for working on your own individual skill or your individual area skill but it's also great in bringing everyone together when they find a common enemy or a common challenger to beat and I feel that that is what what fighting games have bred and that's what makes fighting games or the people that play fighting games stronger. You know, that's what rivalries bring. Um, in Marvel 2 days, Finesse happened to be my rival and I never overcame that. I mean, I finally beat him in tournament a few times, but he still had my number. He still could beat me consistently. That was the one rival I never got over, but it kept me hungry, it kept me practicing. And, and once I beat my rival, that means I need to find another rival. I do think rivalries are really good, uh, usually. Uh, me personally, my big rivals back in the day were uh, Shady and Genghis. Uh, man, I hated those guys. Like, you know, we played together all the time, but more, more often than not, they'd beat me, and it really drove me to uh, want to do better and succeed, because I don't know if any of you guys know Genghis, but he would talk some mad poo, you know what I'm saying? So it, when you have someone like that really driving you to, to play better, it, it, it resonates with you. You just want, you can't, can't stand this guy talking like that and you can't do anything but take it until you, until you beat him. The rivalry that I had, you know, pretty much got me into, uh, into the fighting game scene, you know, completely. Uh, it was back in Atlanta a long time ago. This was probably like 10 years ago. I was playing Third Strike and um, 
this, this guy's like my really good friend now, but at the time, you know, I was working at GameStop and I was playing like on a Dreamcast pad, like, and I, you know, all these people would come in and I'd just smoke them, but this Korean kid, Jun Ro, just came in there, whooped my ass like 32 games straight. And after that, I was like, I had never be been beaten that bad in my entire life. You know, I was young and, and hungry and disgusted. <laughs> you know, I just wanted to kill this guy. So, you know, I, I, it, it's what kind of gave me the drive to like, A, learn how to play on stick. And it gave me the drive to, to go out to tournaments and sessions and like start practicing and, you know, actually learn the, the uh, some of the deeper aspects of the game. So, yeah, I mean, it's really what, that's really the f what drove me to even be, you know, where I am today, honestly. I would not be doing any of this right now if it wasn't for fucking Junro <laughs> with my ass with like, I don't even know who it was, like Ken or something. He could probably play anybody at that time and beat me, but yeah. Um, Ray Ray, um, as far as East Coast Throwdown was concerned, uh, that was a rival of mine. And, and during that portion of time, I considered him the highest threat. You know, I made him into a monster in my mind to, to, so that, to make sure that I could take that rivalry serious. Not only did I end up beating Ray Ray, but then I ended up winning ECT. And had it not been for that rivalry with Ray Ray, I probably wouldn't have won that major because I took Ray Ray so serious that I practiced like I've never practiced before or even since. Having a rival is basically never letting yourself fall down. I think pride is probably the biggest thing. You could be the worst player in the world, have the biggest pride, and still keep pushing to try to beat your opponent. When you put you know, you could put money on the line, you could put prizes on the line, but when you have a, a really strong rivalry, you put like, you know, you put yourself on the line, you put your pride on the line, and that really causes people to play their best. Something you feel deep in your gut, you know, where you're like, man, I gotta beat this guy, you know, and nothing's gonna stop me. And it's really something you gotta prove to yourself, and not always to yourself, sometimes to your peers, you know, um, sometimes to both. You have somebody that you're consistently measuring yourself against? And you can't let them leave you in the dust. Otherwise, you're no longer a rival. You're like a has-been at that point. Uh, for other people, it can be their certain death. You know, there's people who've had you know rival rivalries in the in the fighting game community where you know they just get blown up so bad you don't even see, see them anymore. You know, so when it comes to the new generation, everyone's nicer. You know, yeah, I want to beat you, but I want to shake your hand and get your autograph and take a picture with you and, and all that, you know, like, yeah, we can all do, we can do all that outside of the game, but I still need a goal. I still need someone to beat. And that's what having a rival is. That's, that's you being competitive against somebody as your goal. And to continue to work off there is what's essential to get better and what keeps you getting better. They, they represent that motivation. You're gonna train and, and train and train and train and, and just all of that to make sure you beat that individual. And so, you know, they, they just represent that goal, that, that thing that you have, to, you have to overcome. If there's no, you know, if the players don't have any vested interest in the match, then it's like, it's just like, it comes down to like chance and luck that something crazy happens in game. In order to kind of build a story around the game, whether or not the match is, is, is you know, super exciting, at least the people can get behind the players and who they want to win, you know? So, you know, sometimes you do get lucky and it's, it's an awesome match, but at the end of the day, it's more about the outcome. It brings that excitement, that hype, that every game counts, you know? I think that's the most important thing. It's like, like you know, even like someone who, who doesn't play the game, but they do understand like, hey, that player is from that area and that player is from that area, you know? I will always support like the New York Knicks, you know? And this guy will always support the LA Lakers, you know, it's kind of like that. And I think overall, the fans, it's good for the fans. The more fans, the bigger the community gets. Again, with streams being huge now, you have a lot of viewers who can actually get behind certain players. And so they'll tune in just to, just to see pe people play and, you know, how players do in various tournaments. So, um, I mean, it's something you, you really have to be aware of when you're putting together content is like, like how do these guys interact, you know? Um, because it's, you know, it's a, it's a culture and some people like each other, some people don't. Um, I like to consider myself a compassionate person, but when I'm playing you, I can't be compassionate. I got to bop you. And so, yeah, I definitely feel like there's been an, almost an alter ego. You know, it's like there's Fnatic and then there's me, Lauren. But I mean, not that they're not too separate, but you know what I mean? Like you, 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 you do have to draw a line. I call these NorCal guys scumbags, you know, but it's all in good fun. At the end of the day, I mean, I respect them for trying, you know, because they want to do well. Just like, I want to do well against them. It's not personal, you know, it's, this is my dream to be a star gamer, you know, and to be a pro gamer. And so um, while I'm pursuing that and, and, and trying to realize that dream, 
it's about a video game. It's about our it's about our goal. It's not about a personal vendetta against me. And I can't say it doesn't happen where you know things get a little out of hand as far as the trash talk and things like that. But again, we're all adults, and we can always go back and say, hey, look, I know I stepped out of line. And I think a lot of times as gamers and as um, you know top players, we we tend to understand where another person's coming from because we understand what it's like when we're on the other end when we want to win so badly or when something means so much to us and it just helps add to the passion of the game and it gives people a reason to play you know because i mean with fighting games especially right now we're in, in this in this weird like kind of gray area where people definitely need a lot of motivation to keep playing and at the end of the day people you know they need a reason to continue to to feel desire to, to play these games um or also kind of fall the wayside so having rival rivalries is a great way to to you know, ignite that fire and keep people on the joysticks. So, almost all all greatness comes from someone pushing you, and that's what rivalry is about: is finding someone that you, you just don't want to get left behind. You know, is you always have someone that you're trying to do better than, and if they're always trying to do better than you, you the both of you will never stop growing.